Hi, I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson and you're watching Get Your Sax Together. And on this week's show, we're going to have a five-way shootout between different synthetic reeds. Let's see what happens. If you want to take things further with your saxophone playing, then definitely consider joining my Inner Circle membership. You can see the link below or you can click the link in the description. There's bonus YouTube footage, there's inspirational solo of the month, there's a monthly Q&A, there's special guests, there's backstage footage with me where you'll be right on stage as I show you how you can use my pro experience to help your playing. It's super cool and it's all inside the Inner Circle, so go and check that out. Also, <clears throat> please go and check out the old saxophone success masterclass as always which is completely free for you it's an hour of quality and transformational saxophone knowledge which is really going to help you move the needle with your playing so there are the tasty resources for you to check out now let's dig right into these synthetic reads first up we have ven by didario they've got a pretty cool packaging and a uh, nice little box for the nice, you know, box with the reed case inside it, like that. And it's nice and easy to pull out. I like their, I like their packaging. But of course, really, once you've bought it, unless you want to clog up your, clog, up, clog. That's easy to say, clog up your shelf with a load of packaging. Um, that's what you end up with. But the good thing about these sleeves is that they're functional. <laughs> the reed just goes in nicely. It's nice and protected. So I really like the packaging on the vent. It looks very like a regular reed. Look at it. You could, that could almost pass for a reed, I reckon. You can modify these reeds. To mimic the organic structure of cane, we reverse engineered cane itself, layering different strengths of polymer fibers with food grade resin and organic reed elements to make up the reed blank. The result, vent outperforms anything else like it. You don't need to soak it, and they say it'll last for roughly three to six months on the vent. They say that the reed strength compares to normal cane reed, but everyone knows that's rubbish. Uh, the Venn reeds come up a lot harder than normal reeds. I play a three for a hard gig. Normally, I would play at least a, a, a three and a half reed. So if you're going to buy a Venn, then uh, get the lower end of what you normally play. So I've got to tell you, I absolutely love playing these uh, Ven that by Didario. Um, it's it feels um, juicy and it feels responsive, and um, the altissimo is really great. It's just got a full, open, uh, bright sound, which is just it just feels like a real pleasure to play. When I put that read on and I start playing, it just makes me want to play more, which is fantastic. And um, it looks and feels very much like a read. Now, this is the read that I've done the most gigging on. Uh, so I've had it on the front line and it really, really performs well under a lot of different conditions, you know, and I've been really tanking it on gigs. Uh, make sure you don't get one too hard, but I'm super impressed with Daddario's Ven and I really, really like it. <laughs> Let's move on. 
Next up, we have the Legere American Cut, which is a very well-known, probably the most ubiquitous um, brand of synthetic reed right now, and it's endorsed by many, many people. As you can see, and I'm, as I'm sure you probably already know, the Legere reeds are completely, or they're opaque. So a lot of people struggle when you're lining it up against your mouthpiece, and I've certainly struggled a little bit. Also, I find that the American Cut reeds are wider at the tip than my Autolink mouthpiece, which is a pretty standard mouthpiece. And if you look very closely, I don't know if you if it will show up yet. Yeah, just shows up there. You can probably see that there's a kind of what looks like a crack in the end. And I have found that after gigging these a lot, they do uh, get hairline cracks down them, which is also true of uh, you know. I think that would also be the true true with other types of synthetic reed. So it's not you know, I'm not picking out Legere. This is what the Legere American Cut 3.0 sounds like, and what I felt like playing with it. Just before I play it, I should have mentioned about the packaging. You get these kind of, um, you get these nice gray reed boxes, which are really sturdy and um, really keep the reed protected. It's very easy to get the reed out, which is nice. And you also get a nice box like this for which the reed sits in. But the only thing is, there's nothing on the case to identify what your reed is. It's very generic, so you have to get a Sharpie or something and write them on. Sometimes when I really push it, it just feels like it's a little bit too edgy or something like that. It's, uh, it hasn't quite got the heart, the juiciness of um, of a real reed. However, the Altissimo is absolutely superb. I really love that. I forgot that they're actually, <laughs> that they're okay. I wouldn't say they're really inspiring. Like if I put that reed on, I wouldn't really feel like, you know, oh, that really makes me want to play. The tenor is the most fussy for reeds. And they're still just, uh, Legere is still not just quite there yet with the American card. Just, and this is all just my personal opinion. Let's move on to the next read now. <laughs> next up, we have the Yamaha ASR, which, as you can see, looks very much like a normal read, a bit like the old um, Venerooni. So... I don't know if they're if these are prototypes or if they're going to improve on their packaging, but this just came in a very simple little plastic case like that, um, and it seems to be bonded down two sides, which makes it actually a tiny bit awkward to get your reed in and out. But I guess what you could, if you're really bothered by it, what you could do is just take out the plastic, and then you're left with a nice little mini sleeve which doesn't offer the same security and protection as, as uh, you know, some of the other brands, but does, you know, does the job, I guess, does the job. The material is a new formulation ba based on fibrous material. That's quite vague. The similar tone to natural reed. The texture is simulated retexture for natural feel. 
similar look and and feel to natural read and the uh read number is laser engraved on the outside surface it is laser engraved but it's also fairly faint in com you know it's the same kind of type color as the read so if you were in a if you were doing a gig and it was quite dark you might struggle to you might struggle to read that they reckoned 320 hours of playing, which is approximately eight months of use. No need to break in the reeds. That's true of the Vens as well. And presumably the... Uh, some people say you do need to break in Legere's, but I'm not sure about that. But Ven definitely saying no need to break it in. And Yamaha are saying no need to break it in either. So let's have a little play and... Um, See what the old uh, Yamaha ASR is saying. I've got a strength three here. So, my response to the Yamaha ASR. I wouldn't say they're as bad as some of the reviews and some of my colleagues have been telling me, but I do think that Yamaha have maybe just got a, f a little way to go with it. For example, Didario's first Ven wasn't very well received at all, but now their second generation of Ven is absolutely fantastic. So maybe, you know, Yamaha being a fairly new player to the market, they're going to learn, develop, get feedback and really start to make progress on their reads. At the moment, it's a bit uninspiring. It's a bit hard. It's lacking a bit of heart. Just overall, there's a lot of stuff, which is, I don't know, it's just, um, you know, a bit, um, it's lacking uh, a sort of rich core to the sound. So I think they've got a way to go, but uh, don't rule out Yamaha because they might, they might come from behind and just to take us all by storm. And actually, there's nothing much, you know, you could, I could perfectly easily gig on these reads. Okay, next read. <laughs> next up, we have Alta by Silverstein. This is the Alta Classic, uh, AKA the Ambi Poly, they call it Ambi Poly. And uh, I've had this read for a while and I've actually done quite a bit of gigging on it, hence the, uh, it's getting a little bit worn out. These are, according to them, made with a new reed material, ambipolymer. Now, I don't know if they've got any fancy packaging, but mine have just come in a little, you know, a little simple, a little simple sleeve, like the, um, like basically a bit like the Yamaha did. Let me try and give you a bit of a better view of that. Yeah, just a simple, simple black sleeve. So not much in the way of packaging, but maybe, um, Maybe they've got something a bit more fancier actually in store. Who knows? I'm addicted to all the uh, the guff sort of um, the blurb. So, unprecedented production with full round and even harmonics in all registers. Uh, it does say that you should soak it for 30 seconds and then it lasts for five hours without drying out. 12 plus months playing. <laughs> a year per read. That is ridiculous. No micro crack or hair. I think it means hairline crack. <laughs> I don't think it means there's no hair in it. <laughs> so the pairing, it says it learns and adjusts to your embouchure and mouthpiece in five to 15 minutes, only for the first use. How can I read learn your embouchure? That's quite a, that's quite a claim. Let's now stick it on 
and see what this one is saying to me. It's uh, two and a half. So as soon as I put the old Alta by Silverstein on and played it, especially in that low register, like around about low G, I was like, oh yeah, this is great. And I forgot that uh, I'd been gigging them for quite a while and really enjoyed doing it until I switched over to Ven. I thought Ven just had the edge. But um, I really like playing with the Alta reeds. They're, it feels juicy. It feels, um, it feels responsive. It feels... Um, enjoyable to play and especially in the low register i think it's got a really rich juicy sound to it not so much as you get a bit higher up in the second register but particularly in the low register i really really like and i would i really like the alter and i would happily i would happily gig on that one <laughs> okay let's now move on to the last read <laughs> next up we have the black bamboo by forest tone forest Tone, forest tone, however you want to say it. Um, and I've got an X, I think it's, uh, I've got an extra hard here, XH. So I was sent three different types of forest tone reeds. There was the traditional, the Hinoki, and the black bamboo. And I decided to plonk for the black bamboo because it suited my playing best. It seemed to be more sparky and open and bright. Um, but you might prefer one of the other two brands. So, but I'm not here to comment on the other two. Packaging wise, you get this pretty classy looking box um, with the Japanese writing on it, indicating that it's a Japanese company. Now, the only thing is it does look pretty cool, but I did notice that there's this blob. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna show up if I get my ugly mug out of the way. See that blob of plastic in there? That kind of stops the reed going in. You can't slide it in. And once it's in, it's difficult to slide out. And it's not very easy to remove. So I thought that's a bit of a weird feature to have in there. Also, it's a bit of an origami job, you know, folding up the, folding up the box. So it looks cool, but it's not particularly practical. This is like a hybrid between um, synthetic and real fibres. A bit like the Ven, I guess. Half bamboo and half PP. Uh, um, polypropyl. I don't know what PP is. The chemist will tell me. Which was the perfect combination of wood and sand while being perfectly consistent because it's manufactured with injection molding. And you know, it's a striking looking reed apart from anything else. What I have found, I've got this black stuff and it's rubbing off from the reed. And I'm thinking, oh, it's like, I don't want, you know, mank like coal on my hands when I handle this reed. I mean, it's not really bad or anything, but I just think. The other ones have got a nice clean feel and this one does have some black which is coming off my finger which I find a bit annoying. Let's have a little listen to the black bamboo. I believe you can adjust these reeds. The main thing is what does it sound like so let's have a little play and you can tell me what you think. Thank you. 
So the old forest tone black bamboo, it's very bright, it's very energetic, it's quite responsive and juicy, it's got a bit of a weird mouthfeel and sometimes it's a little bit hard and edgy without enough richness and fullness and sort of juiciness if you like. Um, not bad in the Altissimo, I couldn't get that fourth octave um, B flat. In fact, I think it might be the the American Cuts, the only one that I managed to do that on that top B flat with these synthetics, actually. Um, and again, like I mentioned, sometimes the black stuff comes off in your hands, but it's actually a it's actually a really good read, the Forest Tone Black Bamboo, and it's got a lot of um, it feels like uh, quite a sort of um, focused and bright sound but maybe lacking just a little bit of uh, richness that I really like. So what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna give you a little highlight of each of the reads that I played, just so you can hear them back to back. And there's a little surprise um, segment on the end as well. Just before we get there, um, I should mention that Fiber Read, I was in touch with Fiber Read, Harry Hartman, um, and they were supposed to send reads, but they, I don't think they ended up sending them, so that's how I couldn't test them. All the reads were sent to me by the manufacturers kindly, but all the opinions that I've got are completely my own. I'm not uh, an endorsee for any of these companies. One man's pleasure is another man's poison, so you might absolutely love one of the reads that I didn't love so much, and that's all great. That's one of the great things about saxophone is that everyone's got their own opinion. So I'll round things off, but first of all, Let's hear all these different reads back to back one more time. <laughs> So in case you hadn't noticed, the very last mystery read was, of course, a good old Kane read, which was a Van Doren 3.5 Java red box. <laughs> it's not even a very good read. But um, I have to say, once I went back to the real Kane, I mean, it's, it still doesn't compare, but it's just such a hassle, man. And, you know, 
I'm happy with synthetic reeds for most things, but if I'm going to record something or if it's something quite special, I'll definitely get a good cane reed. So let's tie a bow around all this stuff now. The synthetic reed market is really coming along, and I don't think it'll be very long before there are reeds manufactured which are very, very similar to cane reeds. I'm not quite sure it's 100% there yet, but I'm quite happy using using um, synthetic reeds for a lot of the stuff that I do, just because of the convenience factor. So I think if I had to pick one to stick with, and I could only play that, I would probably choose the Dario's Ven because is uh, it just inspires me to play and I love the juiciness of it. But I could I could quite happily gig on all the synthetic reeds, which I've tried and they definitely could not say that years ago. So <laughs> things are really improving. I'd love to hear your opinion. So drop me a note in the, in the comments and see if what each one sounded like to you. That's really what it matters. Also, the Ven just kind of felt better in my mouth. Some of the other ones felt a bit weird. The, the uh, Black Bamboo uh, and the uh, Legere felt a little bit different in my mouth. Um, and that's really important as well. The feel, how it feels to you, is what really matters at the end of the day. So have a little experiment with some of these reads if you can afford it. <laughs> and um, I'd love to know your opinions in the comments. So that's it for this week. I know it's quite a lengthy video, but I just wanted to do all these reads a bit of justice. And I also, I know it's not a fully scientific video. I haven't, you know, played the same thing back to back so you can really hear the difference. I, I just went with the mood that each read took me, which is just as important in my opinion. Um, you'll also find reviews of these reads. So with all my other fantastic colleagues, uh, Nigel's done some, Jay, you know. Um, so, have a little look around the videos and see if you can get a consensus. If you get a chance to try them in the shop and you don't have to buy them, brilliant, then definitely do that. But I'm really excited about the the, uh, the future for synthetic reeds and I think we should all be as as um, saxophonists, saxophonists. <laughs> um, if you haven't already checked it out, go and watch the video about my Inner Circle membership because I'm sure there's going to be some great stuff in you in there, including a whole section in the forum on gear geekery where you can geek out <laughs> until your heart's content and I'll get involved with you. In the meantime, of course, you can get the free Saxophone Success Masterclass. And thank you so much if you've bought me a coffee using one of the links in the description. It really is much appreciated and really helps me uh, in producing these videos, <laughs> not least because of the caffeine boost. <laughs> Until next week, I hope you have a fantastic week. Practice hard, practice smart, and enjoy your music. Take it easy. Do you know what? Let's stop this. Let's now move on to the last read, which is... I don't think I played it.